Let me ask you guys a question. What's the most utilized musculature in the back squat exercise? Now, most of you are gonna answer the quadriceps and you're actually incorrect. Equally utilized in heavy squats are gonna be your glutes and your adductors. And I'm gonna prove it today with muscle volume research as well as modeling predictive research as well as one of the smartest minds in the exercise science field, Greg Knuckles. I'm gonna link an article of his down in the description box. We're gonna to explain to you the functions of the glutes and the adductors and how they're heavily utilized, in some cases even more than your quadriceps in the squatting exercise. But don't let this intro be confusing. The quads get super jacked and they're just as important in the back squat. But what I wanna to do today is really hammer home the idea that the glutes and adductors are equally as valid. And if you're not understanding this, your squat training is not gonna go perfectly. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I'm gonna explain everything that's written down on this whiteboard just for you guys. However, if you want some takeaways in how to approach your training differently, as well as some tips that I'm gonna give with this information in mind, that's gonna be saved for our group coaching members private on our website. If you're interested, sign up down below in the description box, only $45 a month. You get an ongoing evolving program that's designed specifically by me, but is customizable by you and you get access to videos like this. Now first, what we're gonna run through is actually all the functions of the different muscle bellies within the back squat exercise. And then after we're gonna talk about the research and walk you through what the research shows. If you ask most coaches about the glutes in a back squat, they're gonna say they're used a little bit, but it's primarily a quad exercise. And actually our research that I'll get to a little bit later proves the total opposite. The glutes are utilized equally, if not even more than the quadriceps in a squat. And I'm going to explain exactly how. But first we have to understand what portion of the lift do the glutes kick in at and what is their primary function? Of course the glutes primary function is hip extension. And if you utilize a very basic understanding of biomechanics and just view a squat from a side view, most people would see that in the bottom hole of the squat where the most tension is, the knee extensors are heavily loaded with a large, longer moment arm, meaning they have a ton of demand and tension, as where the hip extensors, aka the glutes, are loaded with very little tension. But as you ascend up out of the hole, where the sticking point is for most people, which is a few inches up out of the hole, the glutes are then actually transferred a ton of that tension and both modeling research as well as muscle volume research, which we'll get to here in a bit, proves that the glutes in the mid range fire hugely. And not only do they fire, but later we're gonna explain how the hamstrings do basically zero. Zero. For helping out your squats. And so it's up to the glutes as well as the adductors to primarily perform the role of hip extension. Specifically, the glutes are gonna do it in the mid portion or just up outside of the hole of the squat. Now, you might say, how would the adductors, which usually are thought of as the medial rotators of the hips, how would they act as a hip extensor? A lot of people don't know this, but your adductor magnus is generally looked at in two portions when it comes to anatomy. The posterior portion known as the ischiochondrial, and don't quote me on the pronunciation of that, I'm an autodidact, so I'm self-taught. When I read this shit online sometimes, I don't always get the pronunciations correctly, but the adductor magnus on the posterior side actually acts in unison with the hamstring muscles. But there's a catch here. So we have to talk about bi and monoarticular muscles. What this means is a bioarticular muscle is a muscle that has two functions at two separate joint sites. So the hamstrings, they function at the hip joint as well as the knee joint. So here's the problem with squats. When you're in a hip flexed and knee flexed position and you need to produce extension, if your hamstrings were to fire as a hip extensor, what's gonna happen is they're also equally gonna fire as an anti-knee extensor. This just has to do with their biarticular motion. And this is why your hamstrings in almost all research, which I'll get to later, shows about zero activation. Zero. For your squats, your hamstrings do jack shit for squats. They don't grow from squats very well. They're not very high in EMG activity, and they're definitely not predictive in mathematical modeling predictions of the squat mechanics. However, your adductor magnus, specifically the posterior fibers, are a monoarticular muscle, meaning they have a singular function and that is gonna be in a great position to perform hip extension. Again, we're gonna to get to the research later to prove this. It's not just me you know, theorizing this. We have research to back this up. Your adductor magnus and glutes act as the primary hip extensors in your squats, and they both fire the most 
a few inches out of the hole to squat. Now lastly, the squat is hugely a quad exercise. Please no one take me out of context. The squat will build a massive quads. In fact, I would still pretty much look at the squat as a primary quad exercise, but your glutes will get absolutely jacked. And in some cases, if we look at the research, Kubo et al actually shows the glutes and adductors in certain trainees grew more in muscle volume than the quads. So you can look up Kubo et al for yourself. I'll also link in the description box, but the quads grew just a shade under 5% in muscle volume as were the adductors. And it's mostly going to be the adductor Magnus for a host of reasons, um, grew by about 6.2% muscle volume on average and the glutes 6.7% muscle volume. Now keep in mind, this wasn't beginner trainees. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. There's other research also showcasing this as well though. You can look up Bloomquist et al, which also points to the idea that not only do the quads grow, but in all of these different research papers, if you look at the hamstrings, the hamstrings hardly grew at all from all the different styles of squats performed. And a lot of these research papers, you can look at the details yourself, also perform full depth squats way below parallel, as well as quarter squats. And in all forms of squats, you pretty much saw no muscle activation or growth in the hamstrings. Now, rightfully so, some people may critique that the first study of these muscle volume studies was done on untrained lifters. However, I think that's actually a strength of the study, but I digress. Let's take a look at the modeling research. So what modeling research is, is it basically is research that utilizes mathematical predictions to model potential theories of how the human body could lift every single pound in the back squat exercise of an example that we may utilize. So let's say a person is lifting 300 pounds on their back squat. It utilizes a mathematical prediction and it creates a model to say, hey, this is how the human body did it. And in the models they created, they realized that the adductor magnus had to be a primary hip extensor in the squat for you to successfully lift the loads in relation to all the other things we talked about with the biarticular motion of the hamstrings and their inhibition at the knee joints, yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna save all the fancy stuff for later in the video, but what you have to understand is the first research paper found that the adductor magnus would have to mathematically be a hip extensor. The second paper also by Megan Bryanton, and I should say the first paper was by Andrew Vygotsky, Vygotowski, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. I'm way too American for it, forgive me for that. Uh, but Megan Bryanton was also a sub-author on that paper, and she's also the author of this paper down here, Megan Bryanton et al. 2015, which looked at the glutes as a primary hip extensor in the squat. Again, coming back to them acting in the mid portion. You could really see this actually on my latest high bar max out single. Right when I hit my sticking point, my body is shifting and my hips are trying hard to get back under the bar so I don't pitch forward and miss the lift. You can tell in this position, the quads are doing very little and the glutes are highly active. This is because of moment arm distribution. Up in the mid portion of the squat, the glutes are just gonna have to fire to get those hips back under the bar. But because everyone takes a very reduced look at biomechanics and only examines the bottom position of the squats, they really miss this function of the glutes and the adductor magnus. Now again, if you want some hard takeaways, please go watch the full video on our website, private for members, only $45 a month, guys. Go sign up using the description box down below. In that video, I'm gonna actually explain what you need to be doing with your training in order to maximize your squat performance as well as how you can utilize squats to grow your glutes, grow your adductors the most optimal way, and all that material is gonna be safe for our audience. If you're not interested in signing up, I hope this video did actually teach you that your glutes and adductors are hugely involved in the squat, if not equally or more than your quads in some degree, at least when it comes to the bodybuilding outcomes of muscle growth, and definitely when it comes to the strength performance outcomes, I think you could agree your glutes and adductors are just as equally important as the quadricep muscles. That's the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.